Creel kicks ahead, knocked on into the zone man. Hi everybody and welcome to Money Man Pineland. We've moved this week and uh, Mark with move comes change and doesn't doesn't seem like much is changing in the Super Rugby. Another tough week last week and uh, another tough week this week. Yeah, and you just, you know, we keep on speaking about it, the inconsistency in team performances, uh, teams on the road. Good we weekend, good, win, good weekend for the South African teams, huh? Probably the best weekend, weekend we've had, eh? Yeah. Very good weekend. Thank God we have South African referees and South African TMOs as well. Not detracting from some of the performances, but I always wonder why it has to come down to whenever we do have a good performance, there's so much controversy around a South African referee or a TMO involved. Uh, well, do you think, let's look at Egon Seconds. Is, is, should he be even refereeing at this level? Well, I mean, nice bloke. Was a very good rugby player in his day, but he's, they fast-tracked him through the system and he's just been so, why? obviously, uh, that, you know that whole thing with Glenn Jackson, they want to get young players to come through the system. Yeah. Same with Egan Seconds. They fast-tracked him. There just seems to be this a blinkered look when it comes to international teams. So, you know, Rugby Pass, the website, did a whole breakdown of South African referees refereeing South African teams this season in Super Rugby in South Africa against international teams. Egan Seconds in three matches has awarded 31 penalties to the South African teams and three against them. Well disciplined teams I'd say. That's what everyone keeps on saying to me and the most disciplined teams there uh, include the Lions who in their last three games have been awarded 43 penalties and conceded just six. That's an average of two a game. Now if you go back a fortnight ago when the Waratahs played against the Lions it was 11 to 2. It was the most absurd referee from Egan. Uh, he, he, he ran into Waratah's players, he let everything go. And the interesting thing for me about that is that this weekend, Morris van der Beste is mm. refereeing the Sharks versus the Lions. Now, the Lions then should be giving away two penalties. I can guarantee it's going to be between 8 and 10 that they'll concede in Durban this weekend. I'm going to go high at 10. So, it's, the, the view is that there is a bias. Now, people may say there's a bias when there's a Kiwi referee refereeing their teams against Australian and New Zealand uh, South African teams. Uh, when they play in New Zealand. But at the moment, what's at the, the talking point is that in this season, four South African Super Rugby teams playing in South Africa against international opposition, refereed by a South African referee. 97 penalties for the South African teams, 46 against them. Inter Again, discipline, great discipline. International referee, <laughs> four South African teams in South Africa against international teams, 72 penalties for the South African teams, 66 against them which is very consistent with what you would see in a game. Yeah. You know, and Steve Hansen was asked about it and he said, I'm not disputing that the 43 penalties were justified because he said in rugby you can give a penalty every 30 seconds. He said what baffles him as a coach is any team who concedes six penalties in three games because it's just not possible. And uh, Aaron Major, after the Highlanders defeat, uh, said that his captain was going up to the referee uh, that he went to the referee office and said, you refereed one team, us, at every infringement, and you never saw theirs. And I think that's what players and teams are just asking for, is that consistency, mm. is how can it be, the, the disparity be where you play in Cape Town and you can be so disciplined mm. and be successful and then go play in New Zealand against the same team and take 30, 40 points. There shouldn't be that differential between two four, uh, between, uh, four white lines. No, I'm definitely a concern for for the, the Rugby World Cup, that, that we don't see this sort of officiating uh, during the World Cup, you know, because it's, it's, it's such a subjective game um, in terms of being a, you could call a penalty at every ruck if you wanted to. But, um, but you know, even again, if you look in the beginning of the game, the Stormers Crusaders game, a lot of controversy about the first try, pass from Mahanga to Cody Taylor, it looked forward, optical illusion or what, I don't know, the referee said play on, Maurice Yonke had no issue with it, it was early in the game. The one that then kills the Stormers, play on, says the referee is running in line with it. You just hear Marius Jonker belt out, I'm bringing you back, forward pass, no try. So not even is there any reason I can't award the try, he'd already made up his mind. Mm. And there was, and the whole thing does the ball come forward out of your hands or backwards out of your hands and it comes backward and then it deviates forward. There's again this, when is a ball knocked on or not, you hear this often, uh, straight down, straight down, it's, he's dropped it. No, and there should be a neutral referee for every game. Well, to, well, you know what I mean, if there's a Kiwi uh, playing here, it should be an Australian referee. Should, you know, you know they, they try to cut costs by putting uh, the referees in charge, and all they did, and we, I think you said it last year, when the Crusaders played uh, against the Lions in the final, or well, the year before last, uh, 
And Jakub Paper was under so much pressure to basically not favor the Lions that there was a feeling that he actually prejudiced them. Yeah. Because he was petrified to even below what was a reasonable penalty, you know, and yeah. that's what was amazing when he did give Quacker that red card. He, he was apologetic when he gave it. I'm like, I have to do this, mate. You know, it was reckless and you're out of here. So I think it puts unfair pressure on the referees. Again, that whole thing also is, World Rugby and Sanzo have said to the referee, your decision is final. Now, if he felt it wasn't forward with the run of play, he should have said, I'm happy with it. I was happy with the 10 other passes. When does the TMO now become the decision maker? And when does the referee become the decision maker? And you know, it's... Well, it almost gets to the stage where every time there's a try scored, everybody looks to the screen to see if there's going to be a review. So, you know, I'd like to see referees make more, more of their own decisions. Yeah, and, and how, how far back do you have to go in a movement, you know? Yeah. To a pass or to a obstruction and when well, does it's it... it's terrible for a punter because if you if you punted on the game and, you know, you, you get a, a try disallowed and, you, and then that was what you wanted, it can be quite heartbreaking. No, it can be. And I mean, there was just, uh, there's so much controversy around it. And I think we, we, we keep on talking about this. Brad Thorne said it, Tony Brown said it, when that game, some was against the Reds. It's, you've been my two players for that, and you play on with those two players for that. That's what they're saying, it's just, let's be consistent. If you're going to penalize us for slowing the ball down, then penalize them, don't give them an extra four seconds, and say you've won them. No, and, and you know, you often see with teams infringing, on their try line, you know, three, four infringes, and then they have a, a chat. So there's no consistency there. Some referees after the second one will do that two sharp blasts on the whistle. You know the yellow card's coming. And in other games, you'll people there'll be four infringements, and then on the fourth or fifth time, they'll say, you know, if it happens again, you know, there should be a rule that if you infringe, uh, you know, and you're defending your try line ten meters in, you know, once it's a yellow card. You know, but, but also the emotional interpretation is. Your team infringes five times in the first two minutes of the game, never a yellow card. If it's the last minute of the game, it always goes to yellow card. Yeah. So either the, the, the punishment must fit the act, not the time in the game, yeah. or the scoreline. Yeah. Anyway, all good though. All good, all South good. African teams, I'm yep. beaten over the weekend. Yep, so let's get, in, <laughs> let's get straight into the weekend ahead. We got the Chiefs and Reds straight up. First up, uh, eight and a half is the spread. I think you? it's a good one. In what way? I think the Reds will lose, but they won't lose by more than nine points. Yeah, well, it's a game I'm not betting on. Um, for my Super Brew, I'm taking the Chiefs by nine. Because the Reds have been, the Reds haven't been blown out of too many games. No. And the Chiefs haven't looked that great. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games. I think if you love rugby, it's a good one to miss. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be too much fun and excitement there. Not too many people, a lot of Bulls supporters. Brumbies, Bulls up next. Four and a half is the spread for, in favour of the Brumbies. I think they'll win by more. No Andre Pollard. He's, yeah. he's come home. Uh, you just let me know. Injured. And the Bulls inconsistency. I thought they were outstanding defensively against, uh, against the Rebels. But again, they played with 38% possession. It was backs to the wall after their poor performance in South Africa. It's that typical South African mentality, we're going to prove people wrong. The next week they expect it to do well and they invariably disappoint. I, I think the Brumbies have been probably the best Australian team at home. Undefeated at home. They've had some very good results there and I think they're a good enough side uh, to win by two scores against the Bulls. Yeah, I like the Brumbies to win by 10 or more on my Super Brew. Um, sorry Bulls fans, but some of you will see that as a good omen. Uh, Sunwolves, Rebels. Cares. Seven and a half points, uh, Rebels favoured? No, more. They'll yeah. win by more. I've yeah. got them 15 plus. I have them by 15 as well. Have you been reading my notes? I have indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Crusaders Blues. This is an interesting game. Crusaders favoured by 13 and a half. I've been impressed with the Blues this year, even though they've had a bit of a dip in form. They don't get blown out and uh, the, the forwards front up. Yeah, and Liam McDonald, former Crusaders lad, uh, will bring a bit more. Uh, discipline, more, more discipline, structure to the side, that kind of fear of playing in Christchurch. The Crusaders have been interesting because they, they're streets ahead of anyone in the competition, but they haven't been quite as consistent as they were a year ago. Uh, you know, brilliant against the Bulls in those first 30 minutes, started against the Stormers like they had been in Mavericks all week and really enjoyed it down here. Uh, kind of got strong as the game got on, but never quite took the game away. Uh, took a beating against the Sharks just physically and somehow got out of jail there. So 
travel back from South Africa, a lot of controversy around them. Yeah, going out. a bit of going out. Um, some homophobic stuff again. Drunken players. Spitting on people. You know, Guys, time to grow up, man. Jesus. And then apologies on Instagram. And, you know, again, I uh, read, read a thin saying, <laughs> one of the New Zealand writers said, South Africa, the, the evils of touring South Africa and how they hold up in their hotel room with security guards and being in Cape Town, the players say it's one of their favorite cities. And then the writer, Richard Nola, in uh, stuff.co.nz writes, but why can't you let a player just go to Lon Street's McDonald's. Lon Street's McDonald's, it's not really in the plushest part of town either. No. Uh, if you're there a couple in the early hours of the morning, you've come from somewhere. And I think Richie Mahunga's thin as well, spitting on women, uh, spitting beer all over them. And so we don't know the circ I mean, we don't know if it was, a, we don't know the circumstances exactly around it, do we? Well, he's apologized on Instagram saying mm. uh, he should have left, he should have been in bed, he was drunk, there was no cause to it, he doesn't know what he was doing and he's not that kind of person. Well, yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's a but I'm just saying phenomena. this. No, I mean, I don't mean. I mean, look, any sort of spinning is 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 grotesque. But we don't know if he was like spewing beer when he was chatting, or he was like, because I'd ha I'd hate to think that he was the sort of person who would spit beer on anybody. Yeah, I I, I was very surprised when uh, I was very. It surprised. Clearly, wasn't an imported beer. No, I was surprised when I kind of read that, but then uh, someone said, when you look at their lamb chops at the moment and the way they're looking on tour. Maybe they were just in character on the night. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be a lot closer than it has been in the past. Yeah. Uh, that first game was also it was a good game when they played in, uh, in Eden Park. It was very close. So, I think it'll be less than 10 points. I still have the Crusaders to win, but closer to 7 than to 13. I have them to win by 5. So, I, li I like this. I'm going to take the plus 13 and a half on the, blue, on the Bulls. The Blues, sorry. And I'm going to put down 2,000, 2000 Rand to win 3,800 back. Um, the Brumbies I like as well. I'm going to do that one for 2,000 Rand to win 38. And then we have the Waratahs and the Jaguars, who John Cardinelli and SA Rugby Magazine pipped to win the, uh, the South African Conference. The Jaguars, that is, because they are in that conference. Yeah, and they're a good, they're a good bet to do it because they go home. They mm. finish off the, the round robin there. Uh, but for that Bullsman last week, they'd be top of the table. So. Good bet to win it. Won't go any further though. They play a New Zealand team in the quarterfinal in Buenos Aires. That'll be the end of them. They've been good on tour uh, in Aust Australasia more so than when they come to South Africa. Even though for the first time they had two away wins here. Yeah? Uh, Not necessarily, Mark. If they top the table, then they could get a home semi-final, right? They get the home quarterfinal. Home quarterfinal, yeah. But then they have to. Oh yeah, they won't play, win the tournament. But they very play New Zealand side. They win that. They get potentially the semi final as well. Yeah. So I don't see them going further than a quarterfinal, even though they top the table. Where uh, Alliance tops the table, they we got the chance of knocking over someone at Ellis Park, and then getting into a semi. But what's the spread on that one? Two and a half minus two and a half for the Waratahs. Yeah, I think that's fairly, fairly accurate in the sense. I think it's a one score game. It could go either way. I'm tipping the Waratahs to win. But the Jaguars haven't been far off, eh? In any no, and I, I'm going to go against you. I'm going to put a thousand down on the Jaguars plus two and a half to to uh, to win or not lose by three or more on that game. Uh, Stormers, Highlanders. I think the Stormers will hammer them. Stormers fans are going to hate me for saying this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Love the Stormers this weekend. Minus two and a half. As Mark, you we were chatting about the pack. I don't think the Highlanders pack uh, can, can stand up to the, to the, uh, to the Stormers this weekend. Um, you know, at, at home, the Stormers are a different side. I like the Stormers to win by about seven to 10 points. And uh, I'm gonna put down 2,000 for the Stormers to win, to, to, to win by three or more points in that game. Yeah, I've got the Stormers to win 12 plus. I think it will be wow. more comfortable than yeah. a lot of people think. No Ben Smith. Uh, the pack, I think, of the Highlanders is one of the poorer packs in the New Zealand franchise yeah. system. And they'll score two great individual tries, but I think that Stormers pack were very impressed against the Crusaders. Systematically, they'll wear them down. We may see a bit of Damien Willems some magic. I just He's, hope. He, he, may I just be in, he may be injured, though. But I just wish they would play someone decent at flyer for the Stormers. Uh, yeah, who doesn't? They've got a back three, no midfield, not a bad nine, no ten. And, and a monster pack that could stand up to any international pack. Yeah. Mm. And they should, by rights, be a top four team, not a top nine team. Correct. And then, of course, we have the Sharks versus the Lions. 
Sharks favored by two and a half. I think that's, that's about right. Uh, no, I think the Sharks will win one more. I um, do too. I think 10 plus. Jeez, we've agreed on almost everything. Right, well, I did see your notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the Sharks to win by 10 or more in this game. So when I see two and a half, I'm thinking I'm down for 3,000 on that. 3,000 to win 5,700 back, including the, the stake. So yeah, it's a big, big week of betting for me. And um, I think there's some good games to be had here. Yeah, some, some very cool ones. I like the one that's finishing off the, the round. Sharks at home to the Lions. Uh, but I also, also the Crusaders Blues, I think, will be probably the game of the weekend when you look at the quality of rugby that you can expect from both teams. I'm, I'm looking forward and to it. And the one not to pick? One not to pick. Well, I wouldn't touch the Chiefs Reds. And I'm not... And, um, and the one not to watch Rebel Sun Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Mark, for coming in. Always a pleasure. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs>